I'm saying hello guys how are you doing today thank you for for thank you for joining can you guys hear me well just let me know if you don't mind just to type in the chat box if my sound is okay then we can proceed uh we'll give another one minute and then we can get started first give me just one second i'm gonna share with you on the box before you guys had asked me to to share the the presentation so i'm gonna do that this time i'm sharing that right now and also, if you give me just one second, I'm going to share with you our last investment opportunity that we're currently uh, raising for this this investment opportunity. So uh, still some spots available, probably like uh, we're going to be uh, closing on this in the next two or two and a half weeks. Okay, so it's already 6.32, so we're going to get started. Just give me one second, I'm going to get started with the presentation here. Okay, just one second. And I'm going to share my screen. Again, guys, uh, thank you for coming today, today or tonight. Uh, this is the topic for this month, right? Like stocks versus real estate. Uh, it's mainly a comparison. It's not necessarily like a fight or like a, <laughs> to put one against another, right? Like uh, I, and actually I believe they are complementary uh, for, for many purposes, right? Like, so let's get started. Okay. Um, as always, a little bit about us. This is uh, our family. Uh, my wife and I, we were born and raised in Lima, Peru. We're from South America. We have been married for, for many years, for 17 years. We have two boys, uh, 12 and uh, 9 years old now. Like this, <laughs> yeah, I, I did that like uh, about a month ago, but my youngest one is nine. I'm a home critical care doctor. My wife is a family medicine doctor. And we have been in real estate for about seven years. And so let's uh, get started, right? And again, like this, this uh, presentation is not necessarily like just trying to sell you real estate or saying like a real estate is the best kind of investment. And actually, I believe like um, both uh, stocks and real estate um, are important for a balanced portfolio in anyone's uh, retirement plans, right? Like so, uh, and again, like it has been proven historically, and and we're gonna see like some of these slides and and some of this proof in the next slides again. So we'll take a closer look at investing in stocks versus real estate, either active or passive, like depending on your lifestyle and again, like how you want to invest also. We're going to be talking about these differences between return on investment. Of course, like this is like the first thing that comes to mind, but there are other things also in, involved or associated, right? Like market correction, competition, consumer behavior, control and transparency, liquidity and communication. So the first one is return on investment, right? Like, so th th this is... But most of us usually go straight to this point, right? Like, so, but just let me tell you, I mean, it's not necessarily like we need to do that because there are other things involved that may make an investment even better, even if the return investment is less than, than, the, than the first one. So historically, the stock market, mainly broad stock market, right? Like Standards & Poor's or or funds that follow Standards & Poor's or NASQAD or, uh, or like Dow, uh, have had uh, good returns to investment, right? Like uh, eight to ten to eleven, even sometimes eleven percent, uh, depending on where you where you look at, right? Like and which which window of time you look at, right? Like uh, REITs, real estate investment trusts, right? Like so, which are kind of like similar stocks. However, they they are based on real estate. They kind of are similar to them, maybe a little bit better, eight to twelve percent. Syndications, which is like uh, what we are a, a fan of and, and we, we usually invest in and we usually bring our investors with, uh, also historically uh, has had been returning between 14 to 20 percent. Okay, but it's important to mention always, like again, like past per, and you maybe have heard this before many times, like past performance doesn't mean or or doesn't equate like uh, future returns, right? And uh, just being fair with uh, with the stock market, right? Like so, uh, this is E.T. Sachs, right? Like which now usually in many physicians groups, many physicians Facebook groups, uh, they discuss about this stock or fund. But we need to be fair, right? Like so again, like if you look at, at the second uh, picture, right over the last five years, uh, the return has been over eighty percent. So a good return on investment, right? Like so, it's sixteen percent every year. But however, if you look this in the long run, this fund was instituted in in two thousand. So and I put here two thousand and ten. Over a period of ten years, the return was four percent to five percent, right? Like so, it depends a lot on what window of time you're looking at. But but overall, like the return on investment has been has has been fair. And that's why we always say like 
just think about like historically the market returns to you a to 10 percent now we follow with this market correction and uh, we have seen this several times and also again like to be fair there's market correction or market reset not just only in the stock market right like this also happens in real estate right it happened in 2008 happened with commercial real estate about like a year year and a half ago so i mean like uh it is happens in in both uh, fields, right? So for the stock markets, uh, usually during a market crash, investors may try to sell quickly, right? Like which only defines your losses, solidifies defines your losses, right? Like so, and and there's this this statement that is very true: you only lose money when you sell. If you haven't sold again, like your stocks or your real estate uh, investment, still the loss hasn't happened. Right, like so, and other people. It says here, other people may aim to accept short-term losses in exchange for long-term gains, which I think like that should be our our goal, right? Like to stay either in the market or in real estate for the long run, right? Like uh, and historically, again, like the market bounces back, and uh, we have seen this many many times. Uh, but not selling during that time is it's difficult. In uh, real estate, yeah, that, that happens too, right? Like, so we need to be prepared for that too. When there's recessions, uh, there's sometimes good because uh, for, for commercial multifamily real estate investments, uh, specifically for uh, workforce housing, right? Like because more people tend to do class B or class C apartment complex. In good times, uh, income and savings uh, rates uh, increase or go higher, which means that there are more people who will move up to better kind of luxury, better apartment complexes, class A competition. So this happens uh, mostly, and, and I believe a little bit more with the stock market than with real estate, right? Like we don't have actually insight into technology development or companies operations. There may be new competitors that can have a significant impact in, on our investment returns, right? Like, so this happened to, again, like like everyone knows about like uh, different stock uh, stocks like Blockbuster, like uh, GoPro, right? Like uh, even like the um, the air airline stocks, right? Like, and that's why again, like investing in individual stocks may not be the best route. Better would be like again, like the broad market, like uh, calling like again the standards and poor's or like uh, mutual funds that follow them. In real estate, multifamily competitors don't just um, show up from nowhere. It's slowly to develop because of space zoning permits are are limited. Right. And uh, again, like when new apartments or, or homes are built, they're going to be all, they're going to be always class A or new, brand new luxury apartments. Right. Like, and again, like that, that doesn't necessarily affect class B or class C apartment complex. So you need to uh, have that in mind when you invest in what, um, I mean, of course, you're investing in real estate, but also in what type of real estate and also like it, it it like it depends a lot on again like class a class b whether if it's like apartment complex whether it is office where it is like uh, other types of commercial real estate consumer behavior and that's important too stock market it's impossible to predict what products or companies uh popularity right like um and and i just mentioned that blockbuster was a great example and then like when netflix came technology and consumer behavior changed and the company uh, went down, dragging investors down with it. Same happened with, uh, for example, GoPro, right? Like, so GoPro was big at the end of the 2000s, beginning of 2010, 2011. Uh, it reached billions of dollars in valuation. And then, like, uh, we found out, like, the cameras in our smartphones were as good, almost as good as them, right? Like, so that shifted also consumer behavior, and the and the company was was in trouble. And and I believe even still is in trouble. Like, um, maybe they're going to try to do bankruptcy proceedings this year. Um, that's what I heard. So in real estate, and this I believe to the core, right? Like, so real estate is very different to that. So, right? Like, so when you invest in real estate, it's not a discretionary spending. You're investing in a basic human need, right? That is not going to go away, right? Like everyone needs a house to live, everyone needs shelter. So we're, we we need to have like a, a roof over our heads. So again, like that's why, again, like I, I'm very believer in, in this kind of investments. Now, control and transparency, right? Like, so we have uh, the stock market, right? Like, and, and uh, we don't have that much control. We only know that uh, we kind of understand that if the company does well, like the stocks are going to go higher. It doesn't necessarily happen like that all the time, right? Like when we 
uh, listen to the company's uh, re quarterly reports. Sometimes there are good news. However, the stock goes down. So, and we don't understand why that happened, right? Like, and as you had seen in the prior uh, prior slides, you you may get a little bit like hesitant and you may want to, may, may, may try to sell your stocks or try to decrease your losses and then like you lose more, right? Like, so under a correction, uh, it, it, it's, uh, you have a terrible helpless feeling, right? Like uh, that takes over. And the CEO, I mean, of course, is unreachable, right? Like, so you, you, I wouldn't imagine any of us trying to reach like Bob Iger from Disney, right? Like, or or uh, Elon Musk from Tesla. I mean, like, if something goes wrong with the company, right? Like, so we're just buying the, their stock, right? In real estate, uh, it's very, very different. I, I mean, also, I mean, if you buy REITs, also, which are kind of like stocks, right? But are based in the real estate field, in the real estate business. I mean, you can also not not reach like the CEO or like the main person. But when you do real estate, actually, when you do real estate by yourself or with a syndication, right? Like with other persons as a passive investor, either you have the full control if you're doing that yourself, or if you're doing a syndication, you know exactly who the deal sponsor is, who the main uh, contact person is, and you can reach out directly to that person, ask questions, provide feedback. Uh, we always have like the commu the monthly communication, quarterly updates, a yearly K-1 taxes documents uh, released for the investors. So those are some of the, again, like important difference that I always find. And that's why I, I like this way of investing uh, a lot. Moving forward, we have uh, liquidity and money barrier entry. Uh, the stock market, as, as you can see, like uh, the stocks are very liquid. Right, which means again, like you can buy and sell stocks uh, very quickly, right? Like, uh, and you can claim or retrieve your money su super quickly, right? Like, so you buy a stock, and uh, then you change your mind after a week. Then you can sell the stock, and again, like after a couple of days, uh, it's cleared, and you have the money back in your bank account, right? And so it's very liquid, right? Like, so it's kind of like similar as cash, right? And, and that's why. When you, again, like apply for a mortgage or like you know, show your statements or your net worth and liquidity, they consider uh, stocks as cash, right? Like, um, so that that's important to mention. And also like uh, the entry is not difficult, right? Like, so you can uh, buy even any stocks like uh, with a dollar or less. Of course, there are like stocks that are like way more valuable, right? Like uh, Berkshire Hathaway, uh, there is in the thousand of dollars. I mean, I'm not, I don't remember how how much is it right now, right? But again, like you can buy uh, stocks with 50 bucks, 100 bucks, and that's not a problem, right? Like, so with real estate, uh, it's a little bit different, right? Like, so if we talk about REITs, I mean, of course, they, they behave like stocks, right? Like, so the barrier of entry is low, right? Like you can also buy with a small amount of money and also REITs are liquid. Right, like you can buy and sell like uh, whenever you want, but that's not necessarily again like real estate, right? Like they are more like stock-like investments. Real estate in general is defined as more illiquid, right? Like so, which means again, like let's say like I have an investment property, right? Like a long-term rental or a syndication. I'm a limited partner in a syndication. So, for example, in this syndication, uh, you need to think, and that's what something something that I always tell my investor or friends that come to investments with us, right? Like, so you need to think about that your money is going to be in the project with other investors' money and with the general partner's money for the time uh, uh, of the project, right? Like for the business plan that we have. So just think about like your money may be there like for five to six to seven years, right? Like, so you need to plan ahead. And again, like if you're thinking about like having like a um, big, um, big spend uh, in the next few years, right? Like again, like you, you're you going to buy a house or you're going to buy a car, your kids are going to college. Just, just think twice about that, that that investment because again, like your money is illiquid, right? Kind of similar when you buy like a home or when you have an investment property, right? Like because if you think about like if you you really need some money and you have an investment property and you and you try to sell the property, it's not that you're going to have the money the next day or in two days, right? Like, so you need to put the house on the market. Your real estate agent needs to show the property. You get like uh, offers, you accept the offer. There's a process also about like the inspection, like, right? Like, so it takes a couple of months at least. And that's where we define that this is illiquid. I mean, of course, I mean, if we if we want to make an exception, uh, there's some people who say like, having a property is not necessarily liquid because you can always make that liquid 
just it just depends at what price you are selling the property, right? Like if you sell the property at a very discounted price, there are going to be people or investors, right? Like us, for example, right? Like uh, they're going to get money somehow, right? Either with cash that we have in savings or uh, with a hard money loan. And we're going to get the money like in two or three days and, and we can buy and close very quickly, right? Like, so again, like it's more about the perspective, but in general, real estate is 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 seen as more illiquid, way more illiquid than the stock market. And our last point is communication, right? Like, so kind of following on the same points that I was mentioning before, right? Like uh, the stock market, sure, you have some reports from the company, right? Like, but it's not that it's a fluid communication. It's not like a two-way communication, right? Like, so it just comes from, again, like from the company and you receive like the the quarterly reports uh, from the meetings and that's it. You you don't have, again, like any any input for the company. Right. Like, so in real estate is, is different, right? Like, so either you are the main person, right? Like if you decide to invest by yourself, right? Like, so you are the boss, you are the, the captain of the boat. Or again, like if you decide to invest passively, you most likely already know the sponsor. You have a relationship with the sponsor and the, and the sponsor has a relationship with you. And uh, again, like uh, they're usually available to you. Like, so for example, in our company, we usually try to, to respond to any of our investors like in 24 hours, right? Like it's usually way less than time than that. But I mean, I mean, like our goal is just to to get back to them in 24 hours, right? Like, and again, like uh, they may have questions and back and forth. Uh, again, like, so for example, for for the tax documents, right? Like, or K-1s many times or sometimes they get delayed and, and then like we have a fluid communication trying to explain why or what's the next step to, to, to do these things, right? So, and... Uh, and that, I believe, is my last slide, uh, again, uh, in terms of trying to compare them. This is a conclusion or like our last slide, again, like, and by no means I try to tell, I'm not trying to tell you that only invest in real estate or in, in real estate is the only investment you should do. Actually, I believe like both are very good ways, very good vehicles for investing and wealth building. There's no certain, uh, certainly no right way to invest. Again, like, and this is true. The key is to invest in period, right? Like, uh, because otherwise you're going to be losing out if you just leave your money in your bank account or in your savings account. Right. And, uh, and, and, and I believe also this to my core, like the diversification is key, even in real estate, right? Like, so try to invest uh, actively and also passively try to invest like, so for example, ourselves, we invest in multifamily, try to invest in multifamily and also let's say in storage or in mobile parks, energy, so different, uh, different, and also with different sponsors, right? Like, so, th so that way uh, you are diversified and you're not too exposed to just one person, one team, or just one type of investment, right? And uh, money sitting in your savings account is losing value, right? Because of inflation in part. Uh, in every passing second, right? Like now, like the inflation is better in this moment, of course, like we were at 3.4, I believe, like the last month. But again, like two years ago, we went up to nine, to, to the high nines and 10. So that means like every year, if you had like a, about like $100,000, you were losing like a, a couple of thousand dollars, several thousand dollars every year with that, right? Like, so the the power of your money would go down because of inflation. And that's why sometimes investing in real estate, especially when it's fixed debt long time, is a very, very good way to invest. And uh, and this is also true, right? Like, and this is something that I always also discuss with everyone who, who talks to us. Just by nature, investing has always, it's always going to have some risk. What we look, what we try to do is have a uh, risk adjusted uh, returns, good risk adjusted returns. But if someone offers you a risk free investment or a return, that's false, right? Like, so don't believe in that person because every investment has some risks. Okay. And, uh, and this is, uh, again, our website uh, that we have. Uh, you guys can uh, visit this at any point. Uh, there's also like the uh, option to join our In My Equity Doctors Investing Club. And this is also our last uh, investment opportunity. I just share with you the link on the on the chat box, and you also have on the chat box the uh, presentation. Right? We have also our uh, YouTube channel where we discuss about like uh, 
many topics, right? Like uh, finance, uh, financial literacy, investing in general, investing in real estate, investing actively and passively, right? Like, so it's up there for you guys if you guys want to get more information or more education about that. And finally, what's like finish with a, with a remark, vision without execution is daydreaming. So you need to focus on on your goals. Okay, and that's it. Let me stop sharing my screen. Okay, I'm gonna stop there. And I'm not sure if you guys have any questions. This has been like a, actually a very busy, very busy month between like uh, between uh, trips, between like, uh, you know, like I'm not sure if you guys uh, like soccer or not, like you have like the Euro Cup starting last week. We have the Copa America starting here in Dallas this week. We have many exciting things. We have uh, one of our uh, flips. We just did a flip, which is actually probably going to, discuss about that in our next webinar uh, about how we did our first flip. So we have been in real estate for a long time, but we have been doing long-term rentals. And this is the first time we did a flip. Uh, we just wanted to test the waters and uh, thanks God, I mean, it went really well. I mean, of course, we our story is a little bit particular because we have been in real estate for some time already. We already know the local area. We have our team already, so that that helps a lot. But uh, yeah, we can share about that like in our next uh, meetup. Uh, and then, guys, I'm not sure if you guys have any questions. I mean, I usually try to keep this uh, less than half an hour just to respect everyone's time. Hey, Ravish, how are you? Yeah, good to good to uh, see you. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, no, um, absolutely. Yeah, no, I just had a question, actually. If you could share your experiences about the tax strat, you know, tax advantages between real estate uh, investment versus, you know, the stocks, what your experience has been in that regard, please. Yes, yes, absolutely. And and this is also something something that we, I mean, this is a broad topic, right? Like, but uh, right. this is something that we, I, I think it would be a great topic for a webinar in one of these next months, right? Like, Perfect. so, um, yeah, so real estate has really good tax incentives and, and the, the reason, and we always ask why, right? Like, so like, the, like the reason is like, because the government helps you to invest in real estate because they, they acknowledge that they are not good business people like to develop or like to provide housing, right? Like, so we don't have a socialized system here in America, right? Like, so that's why they live for, for, for the investors. And every time they want to push or they want to incentivize the sectors, they they give you tax breaks, right? Like, so again, like there, there are many things in real estate. Like, so for example, again, like there, you can deduct in your business pretty much everything, like any any expense that you have. Right, like so, so, so that's very important, right? Like so, so you also have uh, what is called depreciation, right? Like so, it, it's it's a very interesting, um, interesting um, concept, right? Like which which, under the eyes of the government or the IRS, uh, your property, not the not the land, but the property itself, decreases in value. Even though, like in the in the in the real world, the property is increasing in value. This decreases in value, right? And for residential and and in commercial real estate in apartment complexes, that is uh, residential too. So you do this in twenty seven years, which means again, like this is going to help you. And this shows as paper losses every year, right? Like so again, like any cash flow. Uh, so I also have my my long term rentals, and usually because of the depreciation and also like the expenses that I claim. I don't pay any taxes on that year on the cash flow that I receive. So that's very important. But also it's important to be transparent, right? Like so all of this that we're doing is to delay or to uh to 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 delay taxes, right? Like so again, like yeah. government allows you to to deduct this, but they don't forget about that. Right. Like so, and, and and that's why it's important to have a good strategy, to have a good CPA that understands real estate, right? Like because again, like I have my long-term rentals, I don't pay. Uh, I don't pay last year. Actually, I had like a negative, like uh, uh, tax, uh, tax tax documents on that. So it was great. Like even though we we were cash flowing in our in our properties, uh, but but again, if at some point I decide to sell them, there's Correct. also what is called like the depreciation recapture, right? Like or the capital gains, which again, like it's something that you should discuss and plan ahead, Correct. right? Like I mean, it's not that that's something negative. It's actually it may be something positive if you decide Correct. to move to a bigger property or to move to another project, right? Like, okay. and and the other important thing is like 
and again, like being very honest and transparent, is that many people go into real estate thinking that they, they are going to get depreciation or like the or the bonus depreciation, right? All these quick tax benefits that it's going to apply to your W two or your active income, and it's and that's not correct. Right, like so, it mainly applies to your passive income, right? Like, uh, and even it doesn't apply to your stocks if you have any losses in the in the stock market, like because that's considered, even though it's the most most direct definition of passive, is it's considered portfolio investment. It's not considered passive investment. So, unfortunately, you cannot claim. Uh, I mean, like your your depreciation losses, your paper depreciation losses in any losses that that, that you may have, like in in the stock market or any gains that you may have there. So, uh, so, so, so that's important. Unless you are a real estate professional, and and that's also a very great topic like, to, to to talk in another gotcha. uh, we, 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 webinar. Uh, which again, like someone who has a full time job, uh, you will Correct. qualify there. Uh, but again, like if you have a spouse that is staying at home, or if you have a spouse that is managing your portfolio, or if, or if you have, there's also an exception for uh, short-term rentals. Uh, you may be able like to deduct your active income with with that. Right, like so, 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 yeah. So, the, so, so, those are some, some, some points to discuss. And again, like, again, like, I cannot provide specific sure, advice about that. Absolutely. And uh, like, I, and I, I think that, that that's that's a great topic, like, to bring maybe a CPA. I mean, we have a couple of great CPAs in the area that uh, we we may be able to bring, like, to uh, again to. But that would be greatly appreciated. I mean, I think yeah. what you do, working as a physician and doing all of this, educating someone like us, you know, who doesn't, I don't have as much of a knowledge. It's very helpful especially your YouTube channel. So really appreciate that actually. Thank you. Thank you, Ravish. Yes. And, and, and there's also, I mean, like, uh, as I always say, like, it's not only real estate, right? Like the other right. types of investments that can help you actually with your, uh, to deduct your active income, right? Like, again, like what the, what the government wants to push or what the government wants to sponsor, right? Like, so for example, oil, oil and energy, right? Like, so that's a great example. I mean, of course, like everything comes with pros and cons, increases right. risks, right? Like, it, so that's what we need to always, every time we talk about an investment, we need to talk about risk adjusted returns. All right. Cool. Thank you. All right. No, awesome, man. Uh, and again, like uh, just trying to respect the time and also like to um, to go back like to, because today I have like a, a shift later tonight. Go for uh, it. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate you guys uh, you coming so tonight. Uh, absolutely, man. Absolutely. And I'm going to have this recording ready in, uh, in our YouTube channel in the next few days. Okay. Great. So thank you. Again, thank you guys. Thank you, Mary, Rabish, Mitzi. I'll see you guys later. Okay. See you. Mm -hmm.